Hi, I'm Michael Tanel with Tux Digital, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to simplify your command line with apt instead of apt get. Before we get started, I'll let you know that this video is a companion video to an article that I wrote for HowToGeek.com. And in that article, you'll find a detailed list of all the differences between apt and apt get as well as the differences between Linux Mint's uh, implementation compared to Debian's and Ubuntu's implementation. You can find a link to the article in the video description. APT, or the Advanced Package Tool, is a collection of tools for package management from the Debian project. APT was originally started in 1998 to solve a lot of package management problems, like putting an end to the dependency hell that so many people experienced in the early days of Linux-based operating systems. For a long time, apt has been separated into many different tools to accomplish various package management related tasks. In the past, users needed to know multiple command structures like apt-get and apt-cache and others to utilize even fundamental aspects of apt. For example, using apt-get to install and remove packages, but using apt-cache to search for available packages to install. Thankfully, the days of apt being broken down into multiple tools has come to an end by introducing apt as a command. If my research is correct, today is the apt command's second birthday. It was first introduced on April 1st, 2014, and I'm fairly certain that's accurate based on digging through the changelog. I had intended to release this video later in the month, but when I learned that the birthday of the command was today, I decided it fit too perfectly to not let it skip the line. You might be thinking, if the app command has been around for two years, why haven't I heard of it before? App did a pretty good job of solving the dependency hell of the past, but app suffers from a different kind of hell now, something I call dispersed documentation hell. For many, many years, practically all tutorials and guides for installing and removing packages on Debian or Ubuntu-based systems have been suggesting app-get to users. In the past, that was the correct suggestion, because apt as a command hadn't existed. But now, the years of guides and tutorials using apt-get kind of hurts the discoverability of apt command. It doesn't stop there, though. The documentation related to apt is scattered in various different tools, and in some cases, such as the main apt command, practically impossible to find online. Due to the dispersed documentation hell, a lot of people aren't aware that this command even exists. Depending on where and how you look, you may find a few helpful pieces of information, but it's more likely that you won't find anything at all. Doing a search on DuckDuckGo or Google for apt documentation, you'd find one of three types of results. apt-get related information, basic overview information regarding apt as a whole, or completely unrelated information. If you were to throw Linux or Ubuntu or even Debian into the search query, the types of results you'll receive won't change. The dispersed documentation hell is so severe that you'll find documentation from Debian.org marked as obsolete documentation before you'll find anything useful related to the app command, if you ever find it at all. Even the information stored in man pages is heavily scattered or non-existent. I'm using Ubuntu 16.04 for this video. And if you run the command man apt in the terminal, you'll receive an up-to-date man page. On the other hand, if you were to search for the man page online, you almost always find the old overview man page like this. Basically empty. If you were to keep digging though, you may uncover the Debian testing man page, or the Ubuntu 16.04 man page, which are both up to date. So basically in order to find the documentation for the app command, you have to already know it exists. You know what would be a good idea? If Debian were to tell people about it on the apt wiki page, or maybe even just link to the man page that's up to date somewhere. It doesn't. So let's get to the good stuff of how to actually use the app command. Instead of demonstrating every aspect of the command, I'm just going to show you the most important features. You can find the full list of available options in my article linked in the video description. 
First, let's search for an application to install. We used to have to do this using app-cache search. Now we can just use app search instead. And it even looks better using this method. So let's install uget. Well, looking at the version number, it says 2.0.2 .2 is available. But going to the website, we see that the latest version is 2.0.5. Let's take this opportunity to add a PPA. I'm just going to paste the command for adding the PPA into the terminal. If you're curious, the shortcut for pasting command into the terminal is Control shift v Now that we've successfully added the PPA, let's update our repository list. In case you're not aware, the apt update command will update our list, and this is necessary for our system to see the new version of uget we just added. Running the apt command now before we update our list, we'll show that the available option is still 2.0.2. .2. Running the update command, followed by the previous command of uh, searching for uget, you'll see that, holy crap, it's 2.6. Okay, that was unexpected the application you get released a new version of 2.0.6 .6 during the recording of this video. That's cool. Alright, let's continue. Instead of using the old app-get install, we can now just use sudo apt install you get. Next, let's do a bit of cleanup. As you can see in the terminal, there are many packages installed that we no longer need. So let's get rid of them with the auto-remove feature that's new in the app command as of Ubuntu 16.04. Ubuntu Say yes. That's it for this demo. I'll leave the rest of the options for you to explore. But before we end the video, I wanted to inform you of something. Linux Mint has their own implementation of this app command. Linux Mint created their app command about seven years ago. Yeah, I know. It surprised me too when I found out. Linux Mint's version is quite different from Debian's. Debian's is a separate binary with its own features, whereas Linux Mint's is a Python script that runs the older commands like apt-get and apt-cache in the background. Since Linux Mint's version has been around much longer, it's also much more extensive. I've included this list in the article linked in the video description. There's one more additional thing I wanted to point out. In Linux Mint, sudo is not really needed. In other systems, when you run apt update, it won't work properly without sudo. But when you run it in Linux Mint, for example, it knows that you need to use sudo in order for this to work, so it just automatically applies sudo to the beginning of your command. This does save a bit of time, but I don't really like this because it will likely result and people not knowing when sudo is being used and when it isn't. Thanks for watching this video. Did you find it helpful? If so, please give it a like. And if you'd like to get any more content from me, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you think this could help someone, feel free to share it. And if you see a guide somewhere telling others that they should use app-get, maybe consider leaving a comment with a, a link to the video. <laughs> anyway, thanks again for watching. I'm Michael Tanell with Tux Digital. And as always, keep using, learning, and enjoying Linux.